Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. First at four, good afternoon. 50 Woolworth staff have been ordered into isolation and unwell shoppers are being told to immediately get a COVID test after an employee tested positive to the virus. The COVID scare is rocking Sydney's inner west as we go to air. Chris Ma has more from the Balmain store. Well, a COVID scare here at the Woolworths in Balmain after a staff member recently returned from Bangladesh tested positive to the virus. Now, the man worked here last weekend before a manager suggested he appeared unwell and should get a COVID check. He just returned from two weeks quarantine in Victoria after testing positive there but being assessed as not being infectious. Now, 50 Woolies staff here are in self-isolation. The store was deep cleaned overnight and reopened. Also, passengers on his flight from Melbourne are being traced. Also, a woman arriving on the XPT train at Central Station this morning was demonstrating symptoms and had travelled from Melbourne despite still waiting for the results of a COVID test. She's now in isolation. At Sydney Airport, passengers arriving from Melbourne were being checked and questioned whether they'd come from Melbourne's lockdown areas. The state government has called on the Victorian authorities to do the same checks in Melbourne before the passengers leave. We have actually asked Victoria to reflect a similar position to what we have done, and that is to set up some sort of screening process at the airport, at the train stations in Victoria, in Melbourne. The Melbourne lockdown today has seen police doing random checks on vehicles, and this morning five passengers who flew into Sydney Airport from Melbourne were found to have come from the lockdown areas, but they were in transit to other states and territories. Thank you, Chris. Guy Sebastian's former manager has faced court charged with stealing more than a million dollars from the singer. He's accused of abusing his relationship with the star to siphon off a small fortune over the years. Natasha Squarey is at Waverley Court. Natasha, the manager was granted bail. Celebrity agent Titus Day walked free on bail this afternoon after appearing before a magistrate here at Waverley Court. He's facing a staggering 61 fraud charges with police accusing him of defrauding his former client Guy Sebastian of more than a million dollars over a six year period. The court heard Day allegedly received 24 payments for Sebastian's work and only five were paid to the artist. 47 year old Day was arrested at his Bondi home just after 6 p.m and spent the night locked up. Are you relieved that you've been granted bail? Were you surprised of the arrest, Mr Day? I'm instructed that the charges will be defended, but we don't wish to say anything else at this point. It's relatively uncomplicated and it's based on trust. He did have lawful access to the money, but it's just a case that he simply failed to forward the appropriate amounts at the, at the appropriate times. Uh, there's certain information that suggests that uh, this victim is not the only one. The pair parted ways in 2017 and has been involved in a long-running dispute centred around money after Sebastian claims he noticed discrepancies in his payments. I just obviously can't say a lot to, to police matter and... Um Day will return to court later this month. The Daily Telegraph has been ordered to pay Geoffrey Rush almost $3 million. The newspaper's publisher lost its appeal against the Oscar winner as part of a defamation case. The judge today rejected claims the amount of compensation was excessive. Leonie Ryan was in court. Good afternoon. Well, this judgment, which is 177 pages long, was in response to Nationwide News and the Daily Telegraph lodging an appeal against the original judgment, which found it defamed the Oscar-winning actor. He originally ruled the evidence given by actress Erin Jean Norville, who the publication had as its star witness during the proceedings, as fanciful, and found the testimony given by Jeffrey Rush was credible, awarding the Hollywood star $2.9 million in damages. News Limited accused the judge of bias and said the amount was excessive. During a two-day hearing, three federal court judges heard submissions from both parties and they have delivered their findings in the federal court dismissing all seven grounds of the appeal. But the judges did find positive statements made by Jean Norval about Rush during promotional interviews for King Lee could have been consistent with her version of events and she may have wanted to speak warmly of the production and the actor, whatever 
her private feelings. Now, of course, Nationwide News or the Daily Telegraph can appeal this appeal in the High Court if they find an error of law has been made. More than 100,000 ship airfares are now up for grabs, with Virgin Australia announcing a comeback sale. The ailing airline has also announced new additions to its domestic routes. Tom Hartley reports. Because everyone loves a comeback. That's what Virgin's calling this happy hour sale, celebrating its resurrection as borders continue opening and restrictions ease across Australia. At 11 this morning, 125,000 cheap airfares went up for grabs. A 12-hour sale with tickets starting at $69 for economy and 250 for business. Now, clearly, there was plenty of interest. The website struggled to keep up with demand, crashing less than half an hour in. And meanwhile, Virgin's also announced it's adding another 17 domestic routes to its current network and by early August aims to be flying to 28 destinations nationwide. But at what capacity and how many flights per day, that's still unknown. Some of those new destinations include Newcastle, Hobart, Launceston, Darwin, Coffs Harbour, Proserpine and Mount Isa, but also some key holiday destinations like Hamilton Island and the Sunshine Coast. And this increase in air traffic means that about 40 grounded jets will return to the skies and work's already well underway to get them airborne. It's a very deep process, it takes roughly 350 hours. We just go over the whole aircraft to make sure everything's moving like it should. This is another milestone moment, not only for tourists and travellers, but also Virgin, still suffering a hangover from thousands of job cuts. The airline seemingly finding its feet under new ownership. The Prime Minister claims most people are using the early withdrawal of super to boost their mortgage repayments. Political reporter Jennifer Beshwadi has more from Canberra. Jen, Scott Morrison says the scheme has been quite effective. Yeah, he did. The Prime Minister today revealed that a lot of people have been using the money they withdraw from their superannuation to shore up their mortgages. To date, more than 2.4 million applications for an early withdrawal of superannuation have been approved, totalling almost $20 billion. Labor has been against the policy from the start, saying it's short-term gain but long-term loss, with new analysis from Industry Super estimating almost half a million Australians have emptied their super balance. But today the Prime Minister says a lot of the money has been used to help people protect their assets. And I think Australians have been making their choices about this very carefully and, uh, and very responsibly. Of course there'll be some instances where that hasn't occurred but I'm pleased to say that that's in the minority of cases. Scott Morrison also warned of organised crime syndicates targeting the job keeper and job seeker schemes. It's understood more than 50 bank accounts have now been frozen by the Australian Federal Police as they investigate the potential rorting of government payments. The scale though I've got to say of integrity challenges that we've had uh, with the many measures we've had in place are quite small compared to the volume of the payments that we're seeing. A review of both schemes is currently being looked over by the relevant ministers with changes to be announced in coming weeks. Victims of Harvey Weinstein are said to be given millions of dollars by the disgraced former Hollywood producer. But the deal has come under fire, with many claiming it's allowed the movie mogul to buy his way out of taking responsibility for his actions. US correspondent Paul Caddock has more. Paul, how does this work out for victims? Good afternoon. This would be another significant legal victory for Harvey Weinstein's accusers. Nine women who sued the convicted rapist have now reached a settlement that, if approved, would see the establishment of a victim's fund worth the equivalent of around $27 million Australian. Anyone with an allegation against Weinstein since the late 1980s could file a confidential claim with accusers released from any non-disclosure agreements. This settlement is for any woman who was abused by Harvey Weinstein. She need not have come forward before. She need not have told her story in the press or have filed a lawsuit. It's a very, very positive thing to come out of an incredibly complicated situation. And it has the potential to really make a difference for a lot of women, women that uh, were harmed by Harvey Weinstein. But other accusers have called the settlement a sellout. As part of the deal, Weinstein will not admit any wrongdoing and he won't be paying the accusers himself. The payouts will come from insurance companies. Those backing the settlement say this outcome was as good as it was going to get. Potential payments could range from $10,000 to more than $1 million Australian, depending on how many people apply. 
Convicted in February in New York, Harvey Weinstein is serving a 23-year jail sentence and he still faces other sex crimes charges here in Los Angeles. Meteorologist David Brown joins us now. Hello, Brownie. How did the day shape up? Yeah, good afternoon, and Lots of sunshine today. It's been windy, though, from time to time, but I must say, perfect drying conditions. Tomorrow, though, somewhat cooler. At the moment, you'll notice it's sitting on 22 degrees. Feels like 16 degrees in the wind. And it's been a windy day, too, high in the Blue Mountains. Check out the speed of this fair with a cumulus cloud just sailing over the top of the uh, Carrington Hotel. Up the road at Mount Boyce, the uh, highest reported maximum wind gust was 72 kilometres per hour just a short time ago. As we look around the state, you'll notice we're tracking a mixture of showers and thunderstorms. Most of that activity confined to the southern ranges and the adjoining western slopes. There's been some fresh snowfalls too across the Alps as well. There's more snow in the mix tonight and tomorrow. The latest model run suggests we could see another 20 to 30 centimetres added to the snow base. Back home, dry west to south westerly winds are set to control our weather for your Friday, so that means clear sky and high wind chill from time to time. At the moment, as we look at current conditions, you'll see it's sitting on 23 degrees in Cronulla, but in the wind it feels like 16. Check out the wind chill at Katoomba. It's down to 5 degrees. Weekend weather in detail, top of the hour, and See you then, Brownie. And still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, why this horse was found swimming more than a kilometre from shore. Sydney's worst bus routes revealed is yours one of them. Bombshell claims GPs accused of performing breast implant surgery after a weekend of training. One patient almost died. The shocking accusations coming up. You're watching 7's 4pm Sydney News and this is a view from Bondi where right now it's 21 degrees. Lifeguards have come to the aid of a horse which needed rescuing a kilometre and a half off the coast of Ireland. GoPro camera captured the moment the team came across the animal after he'd made his way out to sea in choppy conditions. They herded him back to shore and safely returned him to his owner. Just as Sydney's public transport limits are relaxed, New data shows which trains and bus lines have been lagging in on-time performance. And the hardest hit commuters are on the North Shore. Cameron Price reports. The report card is out for the performance of Sydney buses and trains with the number of services that are running on time. The annual figures released overnight finding on our train network one in 13 services arrived five or more minutes late in the past financial year. The worst delays on the T1 North Shore line with more than 10% of trains delayed. Not far behind the T9 Northern line followed by the T2 Inner West, T3 Bankstown, T8 Airport and South and T4 Eastern Illawarra. It's easy to forget during the last few months of what was happening, but we had some pretty bad storms. We lost the Blue Mountains line. We had a lot of issues in terms of perhaps the elements against us. Uh, we had a couple of broken rails. So there were things happening in February. And we do get months when big single incidents occur, impact the overall performance. On the bus network, passengers in the inner suburbs experienced the most delays. Top of the list, Strathfield, Earlwood services. But overall, buses were on time more regularly than trains in the past year. Thanks, Cam. Donald Trump says he has no problem putting on a mask in public, but has doubled down on his view COVID-19 will disappear. The US president said wearing a mask shouldn't be compulsory, but he would wear one in a crowd. I mean, I'd have no problem. Actually, I, I had a mask on. I sort of liked the way I looked. OK, I thought it was OK. It was a dark black mask and I thought it looked OK. It looked like the Lone Ranger. The president has only been seen wearing a mask on one occasion. Russian President Vladimir Putin has paved his way to remain in power until 2036. Voters overwhelmingly backed a referendum, changing the constitution to allow Putin to run for two more terms. Unsurprisingly, there are reports of irregularities with the polling figures. Russian families were even given one-off payments of $200 on Putin's orders in the lead-up to the vote. Putin says he doesn't plan to be president beyond 2024, but wants to have the option. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, a fresh crackdown rocks Hong Kong, why we could soon be welcoming presidents fleeing the Chinese-led violence. Plus, the astounding measures police are taking to keep Melbourne's infected suburbs locked down. 
And in sport, the Bulldogs' captain's passionate defence of the club's culture and under fire coach Dean Payne. Tonight on 7 News with Mark Ferguson. A new COVID crisis strikes a Balmain supermarket. Guy Sebastian speaks out after his former manager's charged with fraud and Sydney's worst performing transport lines. Tonight on 7 News at 6. 370 people have been arrested after mass protests against new national security laws in Hong Kong. The reforms make undermining authority in Hong Kong a crime, punishable with a life sentence. Police fired water cannons, tear gas and pepper spray at the demonstrators. Now the PM is tossing up, giving safe haven to residents, fleeing the Chinese crackdown. Time for sport now with Mark Beretta. Hello, Brett. The top dog at Belmore is not happy. No, not at all. And Josh Jackson has passionately defended the culture at Canterbury under coach Dean Pay. With the Bulldogs anchored to the bottom of the ladder, Pay is fighting to hold on to his job. But Jackson says he has the players' full support, slamming suggestions the club legend has instilled a poor culture. It really frustrates me when, when um, people... I guess, come out and slam, you know, say stuff about our culture. And the people that are coming out and saying it have never been here. They've never been in the walls. They don't know what we do. Broncos coach Anthony Seabold is under immense pressure after five straight losses, but remains defiant. I've got a really strong contract there. It's um, not performance-based. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'll know if I'm not the right person for the job. So I won't need anyone else to tap me on the shoulder. The round eight kicks off tonight with the Roosters up against the Storm at Suncorp Stadium. Raiders co-captain Jared Croker is adamant the messy John Bateman saga won't derail the Green Machine's premiership quest. Ricky Stewart accused Bateman's agent, agent Isaac Moses of manipulation and constant agitation in order to get the Englishman a release from the final year of his contract. Canberra finally agreed this Made week. Some noise from rehab, isn't he? Um, nah, Batty's been up front with us, the boys, and um, you know we we know exactly you know where Batty's at. Yeah, Bateman's return from shoulder surgery is at least a month away. Victorian AFL clubs are set to relocate to interstate quarantine hubs as early as next week due to the rise in coronavirus cases in Melbourne. Giants coach Leon Cameron says everyone needs to get used to the fact some teams are going to be hugely disadvantaged this season. People will talk about the integrity. The integrity when the ball bounces, whether we play four games in Adelaide, because we have to, it doesn't matter. Now, there was a scare for the Giants at training this morning. Toby Green floored by a heavy knock, but he was quickly back on his feet. The Giants host Hawthorne on Sunday night. The Reds say they're ready to smash bitter rivals the Waratahs when Super Rugby returns tomorrow night. New South Wales has won the last 11 editions of the interstate grudge match. Former Blues origin captain Paul Gallen addressed the Tars this week about his hatred of all things Queensland. The guys are hungry. I know they've had sort of Gallen come in. We've got our own guys, you know. Like who? Oh, we've got Brad for one. O'Connor is referring to Reds coach Brad Thorne. Chelsea has crashed to a shock Premier League defeat against relegation-threatened West Ham. Down 2-1 deep in the second half. Williams' magical free kick brought the Here's Blues level. The, uh, oh, brilliantly done. That is magnificent execution. What a strike. What a moment to pull it out. But the Hammers had the final say, scoring an 89th minute match winner to move three points clear of the drop zone. Relegation appears a formality for last place Norwich, who self-destructed in a 4-0 hiding from Arsenal. The COVID-19 spike in Victoria has resulted in a huge win for Sydney motorsport fans. The next supercars round in just over a fortnight has been switched from Winton to Sydney Motorsport Park at Eastern Creek. There'll be three races, including one under lights with up to 10,000 fans at the track. You can expect us to map out the grandstand in a similar way that the ball sports are. And then we've got plenty of lovely open space here to, to get fans in. The Victorian-based teams will be separated from the rest of the pit paddock as a precaution. And a big thing, that getting fans back into motor racing, Absolutely. getting that event from Winton up here to Sydney is a big win for Sydney yeah, motorsport for sure. fans. Good to see you, Brett. You Thank too, you very much. Thanks. Don't go anywhere. Our top stories are just ahead. On the ground in Victoria's virus hot zones, we give you a look at the police checkpoints keeping infected residents from leaving their homes. 
Doctors sued, accused of carrying out breast surgery, possibly after several days of training. One woman almost died. A rift within the coalition claims a betrayal going all the way to the top. The bombshell allegations are coming up. And why Woolworths has just been slapped with a massive fine for misleading customers? See what they did next. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. Welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. 50 people are in isolation after an employee at Balmain Woolworths tested positive for coronavirus after flying in from Melbourne. Guy Sebastian's former manager has faced court charged with stealing more than a million dollars from the singer. The Daily Telegraph has been ordered to pay Geoffrey Rush almost $3 million. And still to come, there's been a lot of news lately on coronavirus vaccines. This one is different. A new drug has scientists excited and it's being tested on people here in Australia. That's coming up. Police are pulling out all the stops to keep the virus outbreak contained in Melbourne's hot zones. Harsh new lockdown measures are in place, enforced by police checkpoints in the middle of the city. Paul Dowsley sent this report from one of those checkpoints today. This is what residents of Broadmeadows and beyond up the hill need to do to get out of their suburb. They are being pulled over at this checkpoint which was established this morning. They are being asked to hand over their licence, asked where they are going. And this is because at the bottom of the hill that is not in lockdown, not a hot spot. So police trying to stop the spread of the virus out of these hot zone suburbs. Up the road, police are using license plate recognition equipment just to check that people are not too far from home. And this is affecting 300,000 residents across Melbourne for the next four weeks. Police today saying they are using more than a thousand officers specifically to enforce these laws around coronavirus. They're also using drones to keep an eye on people movements. And they're also saying that discretion that we have seen over recent weeks in relation to handing out fines of $1,652, that's pretty much gone. If you hand out an excuse to a police officer or if you try to lie to them, they insist you will be caught, you will be fined because they need to stop the spread of this virus. Ignorance of the law will not be tolerated. Chief Commissioner Shane Patton saying that you should be used to having your licence handy if you're going around these suburbs because these checkpoints will remain in place for at least the next four weeks and they will be operating 24 hours a day. There are increased biosecurity measures at Sydney Airport this afternoon with visitors from Victoria checked to see if they are from any of the 10 lockdown postcodes as well as filling out a form declaring they are not from a hotspot. There are identity checks and temperature testing. I suppose you've got to do it because it's, you know, for everybody's health. But um, it's a bit daunting. The first was temperature check, then after that they asked us like, if we've been in contact with anyone with COVID or flu-like symptoms. We just had a temperature check as we were boarding off and postal code check as to where we were coming from. The Berejiklian government is threatening fines of up to $11,000 and six months in jail for anyone breaking the border controls. New South Wales residents who have visited the hotspot suburbs must quarantine for 14 days or face similar penalties. A group of doctors is being sued by almost a thousand women accused of performing negligent breast implant operations. It's the first time the medical practitioners who operated the Cosmetic Institute clinics have been named. Court documents claim 10 of the 12 doctors listed in the court action didn't have any specialist qualifications, training or experience. It's alleged they may have received as little as one full weekend of training, despite being advertised as award-winning surgeons. The case was lodged after a 24-year-old had to be revived on the operating table in 2015. With the Eden Monero by-election only two days away, Labor has seized on claims of infighting in the coalition. The Deputy Premier is accused of being at the centre of it all. State political reporter Alex Hart is following this story. Yes, and it was only a few weeks ago that John Barillaro, the Deputy Premier, was considering running in the by-election himself. Instead, he's been campaigning on the ground in support of the Nationals' candidate, Trevor Hicks. There are reports today that at the same time, he's also been trying to sabotage the Liberals' vote by urging Nationals' voters to preference Labor ahead of the Liberals' candidate. Mr Barillaro has left open the option of running in this seat at the next election, but under the coalition agreement, he can't do that 
if the Liberals win on Saturday this morning, he said there's no proof to back up the claims. That article that you're referring to in itself said there was no evidence. No evidence whatsoever. But that didn't stop Labor seizing on these reports. Well, this by-election is ending the way it began, with the Liberals and Nationals fighting each other. Under their How to Vote card, they say vote one National, vote two Liberal. Mr Barilaro is also under fire today for refusing to deny he gave his second preference vote to Labor ahead of the Liberals at the last federal election. Oh, that, that's a good question and uh, can I just say this, uh, like everybody in this country, what you do in the privacy of the ballot box uh, is up to you. If John Barilaro couldn't bring himself to vote for the Liberals at the last election, then why would anybody vote Liberal on the weekend? And I'll have more on this story in our full report tonight at six. And Thank you, Alex. A man is in custody following a siege where two adults and two children were held in a Newcastle home. Police say the man fired non-lethal pellets which hit two officers during the standoff in Maryland. The hostages were freed at 11 o'clock. The man was taken to Waratah Police Station for questioning. The leader of an alleged drug supply ring is among three men aged in their 20s and 30s. Police have charged after a hotel raid. Officers seized seven kilos of heroin and almost $2 million in the Bass Hill Hotel room, arresting two of the men as they ran away. More than $240,000 was also seized in connected raids around north and southwest Sydney. The men didn't apply for bail at Bankstown Local Court today. A 17-year-old girl, hurt, has been hit by broken glass after bullets were fired at a home in Western Sydney early this morning. And this afternoon, the shooters are still on the run. Tom Saker has more. Well, and police say at least two guns were used to shoot at this home here in Guildford this morning when 12 people were inside, including eight children. The family lives in the complex, which includes a granny flat, and a 17-year-old girl was remarkably the only person inside this morning to suffer injury, but didn't require hospitalisation for lacerations to her hand from broken glass that came from a window that was shot at. Police say the home here on Woodstock Street was targeted around 5am and that one man inside the home is known to police. Clearly um, a very dangerous situation involving firearms being shot into a premises that are occupied by children. So we're taking it very seriously. There's also babies in, that, in there as well, so yeah. it is shocking. Yeah. Shotgun pellet holes can be seen on the outside of the home and two massive holes can be seen in a side window. Still, the children were taken to school this morning as normal. Police say there are no witnesses so far and they haven't yet determined how many shooters there were or if there was a getaway car. Forensic officers found at least two types of bullet casings at the crime scene this morning. But police will now have to rely on the cooperation of the man who was believed to be the target of the attack. Anne. Thank you, Tom. 10,000 volunteers will become community gatekeepers in a lifeline to New South Wales areas which have high suicide rates. The state government will train an army of volunteers to talk to residents who feel vulnerable in a bid to lower the high rate of suicides. To support people, to support each other and to make sure as colleagues, friends, family, communities, we come together making sure uh, that we look after each other. Members of 13 volunteer organisations, including the Rural Fire Service, will take part in the critical training. It will help locals in towns affected by bushfires and drought. Supermarket giant Woolworths has received a million dollar fine. The company has been accused of repeatedly spamming its customers and ignoring requests to be removed from mailing lists. Amber Laidler has the details. This is the largest fine ever handed down by the Australian Communications and Media Authority. Woolworths ordered to pay $1,003,800 for unlawfully spamming more than 1.2 million of its customers in 2018 and 2019 by sending marketing emails to members of its rewards program after they repeatedly tried to unsubscribe. The ACMA considered the number of breaches, over 5 million emails sent in circumstances where 
the customer had not consented to receive that email. According to the ACMA, Woolworths had received customer complaints and a warning from the watchdog that their system was flawed. But customers continued to be spammed if they shared an email address with another rewards customer, meaning if multiple family members used the same address but only one unsubscribed, the others still received the emails. In a statement, Woolworths says it apologises for failing to act on all unsubscribe requests as required under the law, and many of the breaches were the result of technical systems and breaches which were fixed in 2019. And what I also expect is that many other businesses will see this and will uh, put in the time and effort to make sure that they too are complying with the law. More than $1.7 million in total has been paid by businesses in the past year for breaches of the Spam Act. If you are receiving unwanted communications from businesses or organisations, you can make a complaint online via the ACMA website. Coming up in 7's afternoon news, why a local council has said residents' pet cats can be killed if they're let out of the house. Plus, the verdict is in with everyone working from home. Who's been doing more housework, men or women? And it's 20 degrees in Randwick. Run has Sydney's forecast soon. One lucky Australian could be $50 million richer tonight. There's been no Division I win for four weeks. It's seen the prize pool steadily grow into what's now the third largest lottery prize this year. For a chance to win, tickets must be bought by 7.30 tonight. You're watching 7's Afternoon News live across Sydney. Still to come, you've heard a lot about coronavirus vaccines recently. This one is different. It's the first Australian-developed drug to begin human trials. We'll tell you when it could be available in just a few minutes. Checking finance now with Stephen Daglian at Comsec. Hello, Stephen. Another great day on the Australian share market. How strong were the gains? Good afternoon, and indeed it was. In fact, the market up 1.6% today. So three straight days of gains for our market. We hit the best levels in three weeks as well. Of course, this is despite the COVID-19 situation in Australia, which is becoming a bit of a concern. So if this leads to further shutdowns, of course, uh, that could certainly be a negative for markets. But today, about 80% of all companies on our market improved. Just some small losses from companies like Boral and also Fletcher Building in that building product space. But outside of that, we had Afterpay hitting a record high. Accounting Software Group, Zero hit a record high. We had Data Centre Operator, Next DC hitting a record high. And retailers did well after Kathmandu said it's had a big lift in sales online in the past six weeks. The Aussie dollar, 69.3 USA. Stephen Daglian from Comsec. Thank you, Stephen. A local council has had their bid to impose a cat curfew rejected. They wanted to be given the power to kill any pets found wandering the streets after dark. And while the plan in Adelaide has been thrown out by the state government, the council maintains it's what residents wanted. Casey Trelaw reports. The contentious bylaw would have seen wandering cats caught and scanned for a microchip. If the owner could be found, that'd be slapped with a $187 fine. If not, the animal would be surrendered to the RSPCA, but that plan hit the skids last night. The Parliament has seen fit to disallow the bylaw, so that's the end of that. It's probably disappointing for the three quarters of the Marion Council community who supported the bylaw. Cats can go wherever they like, whenever they like, and there's no restriction. The curfew aims to stop cats roaming at night. It had been two years in the making, but last night Marion Council's cat management plan proposal was formally rejected and some say they're relieved. I hate the idea of the trapping because that's terrifying for kitties. I think we're getting nanny state. There are now calls for the state government to implement its own cat control plan for the entire metropolitan Adelaide. I think it's now up to state government to take some action and we would support them, we'll help them in any way possible to address the issue. But the offer to help may not be accepted. We won't be able to work with Marion Council on this matter. Uh, they've squibbed the opportunity to show leadership. Hugely disappointing. The community wants improved cat management. Um, it's just the way that we're going about it isn't right. The RSPCA says South Australia is lagging behind other states which have much tougher cat management plans. A survey of 7,000 Australians has revealed the divide of domestic chores hasn't changed in a major way since the coronavirus outbreak. The Australian Institute of Family Studies found 52% of mothers say they've done the bulk yep. of pandemic parenting, despite more parents working from home. 
City 6pm News is coming up with Mark Ferguson. Hello, Mark. What are you working on in the newsroom today? Yeah, hello there, Anne. We'll have the latest on the new coronavirus scare in Balmain, where 50 Woolworth staff have been ordered into self-isolation. It comes after a worker was allowed to return from Melbourne despite testing positive to COVID-19. Tonight at 6, the new crackdown on travellers arriving from Victoria. Is it time to close the border? Also, singer Guy Sebastian has spoken out after his former manager was charged with defrauding him out of more than a million dollars. What happened when the agent faced court? Plus, a high-profile Sydney neurosurgeon has been cleared of assaulting his wife following an early morning scuffle at their eastern suburbs home. What the magistrate had to say. And Virgin has launched a massive comeback sale to lure back travellers, the biggest bargains and where you can go. And those stories and plenty more, Sydney 7 News tonight at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Fergo. 4.47, let's get a check on Sydney's traffic. And trials for the Southern Hemisphere's first potential coronavirus vaccine have started in South Australia. 40 adults will receive two doses three weeks apart of COVAX-19 or a placebo injection. They'll then have blood tests to measure protective antibody and T-cell responses. Volunteer Ian Tindall. This is like the new polio. It'll just come back in waves until we develop an effective vaccine. So this is the day one. If all goes to plan, a vaccine could be on the market in six months. Prince Harry has dialed into an online ceremony honouring the recipients of the annual Diana Awards. The awards honour young people making positive changes to the world and coincide with Princess Diana's birthday. Sarah Greenodge reports. Well, on what would have been Princess Diana's 59th birthday, her youngest son, Prince Harry, delivered this surprise, very passionate video message from his new home in L.A. on behalf of himself and his brother, Prince William, praising young people who were trying to make a difference and instigate change in the world. Prince Harry also touched on the Black Lives Matter movement, praising young people who were fighting against what he described as institutional racism, especially at a time, he says, when there is so much division, isolation, and anger in the world. Like many of you, she never took the easy route, or the popular one, or the comfortable one. But she stood for something, and she stood up for people who needed it. This is the first time the Diana Awards have been held virtually. They were created back in 1999 to acknowledge young people for their social action and their humanitarian efforts. 184 inspirational kids were acknowledged today and Prince Harry said his mum would have been fighting in their corner. Thanks, Sarah. Next in Seven's Afternoon News, David Brown will be here with your very latest forecast. School holiday golden ticket, triple family passes, $1,200 in value. How to win, 7 News at 6 o'clock. Working from home can have its own set of unique challenges. Spare a thought for this journalist in the UK who was trying to file a report when she was interrupted live on air. The Minister David Cameron was talking about... Oh, I'm really sorry, that's my son arriving. Really? Sorry, I'm really embarrassed. Sorry. Hold on one second. Oh, can I sorry. Two yes, you can have two biscuits. I'm really sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, OK, well, let's, we'll leave uh, Deborah Haynes in full flow there with uh, some family duties, but that's what happens during uh, lockdown. And the toddler's been praised online for his use of leverage in his snack negotiation. Hmm. David, with the very latest forecast. Hello, Brownie. What's happening? Yeah, good afternoon, Dan. Mild, sunny conditions today. Cooler and clear tomorrow. Big chill building on Saturday. Now, last night, believe it or not, was the city's uh, warmest since the 1st of June. The low dropped down to 13.6 uh, degrees. The top, a very comfortable 23 degrees around the state at the moment. It's uh, warmish, I guess, in Burke. 25 degrees ahead of this cool change. On the other side, different story in the cooler air. You'll notice Cobar's dropped back to uh, 19 degrees. It's sunny in Newcastle at the moment and around 22 degrees, but I must say the light is fading quickly. As we go to the uh, satellite, we can now track this frontal complex that's sweeping across our state. The whole system is expected to track all the way towards the uh, northeast corner. Upstream, though, there is another on the way. You'll notice that moving through, but the thing that stands out is some showers, maybe some storms developing over the northeast corner. Tomorrow, the secondary system bringing some scattered showers to southern areas, most of that activity around the southern ranges and the southwest slopes. And yes, it's cold enough to fall as snow, potentially 20-odd centimetres. Melbourne, of course, is stuck in this. Have a look at the maximum. It's only 11 degrees, cold, showery, very windy, some hail from time to time. 
Adelaide, some showers also around 15 degrees, but on the other side of the change, yes, it's warm through the southeast corner of Queensland, including the northeast corner of our state. 25 degrees in Brisbane. For Perth tomorrow, sun in around 20. For us, our forecast tops 19 degrees, although the wind chill will be high from time to time, especially during the morning. As for the next uh, seven days, here's the latest forecast. Check out Saturday. 60 degrees at best, yes, high wind chill, cloudy coastal, but dry all the way through. That's the latest weather from the Weather Centre. More at 6 o'clock. Thanks a lot, Brownie. And that is Sydney's 4pm news for this Thursday. Mark Ferguson will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Sanders. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia. Thank you for joining us. Have a great night.